Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In this particular tutorial, we are going to learn about SPFX development. Before we even get into the development, I would like to show you what we are planning to develop. So here on your screen, you have an SPFX application which shows a class diagram. We want to go ahead and create a web part in which we can add some code. Now I'll tell you what this code is and it should render as a diagram. Implement that, I'm going to use none other than mermaid diagram. So this is what we are going to go ahead and use. It's a great, great tool for diagramming and charting. There are various tutorials out here, right, related to mermaid. And then you can create a number of diagrams. Let's take an example. Let's say that I want to prepare I want to create a pie chart, something like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this, go back into my web part and update it to show like this. And here, if you see, it now shows a pie chart. So isn't this interesting? We are going to go ahead and create this web part from scratch. So if you're not an SPFX developer, I think this would be where you can get started and then slowly, steadily increase your skill set and build something even better. Uh, before we even begin, I have done some prerequisites. Uh, one of the prerequisite is setting, setting up an SPFX framework development environment. Now, there's already an awesome video out here which talks about how to go ahead and set up the development. So basically, you need to go ahead and install Node, right? I already have a Node version. Uh, SharePoint Framework 1.20 is supported on Node 18. So remember that you need to have Node 18 is you need to have a code editor. I have Visual Studio Code installed. You need to install some development tool chains such as Yo and Gulp. If you see, uh, it tells you to install Gulp it tells you to install Yeoman. If you copy this command, everything happens together. So you don't have to run this individually. Those are the prerequisites when it comes to having a development environment. You also need to have a broadened browser on which you can test, right? Finally, if you are running SPFX on local web server, you might have to install the cert. So these are the prerequisites that you need to go ahead and prepare before even the development. Now that if you have the prerequisites in place, let's get our development journey started. Drag the folder here and I will rename it to js-mermaid-diagram. Um, now that it's open in a folder, I'm going to right click I'll say show more options. I already have Visual Studio Code installed. So I launch my Visual Studio Code instance. Understand this, I already have the dependencies, so everything should work as expected. I go to the terminal and the first thing that I'll do is that I will go ahead and set up a new project. So to build a web part, I'm going to first put in a command yo at the rate Microsoft forward slash SharePoint. So what this will do is that this is going to use the Yeoman SharePoint generator and it will ask me a series of questions. If you see, it already asked me the first question. What is your solution name? My solution name is js diagram. What do I want to create? I want to create a web part. This tutorial is about the web part. We'll work on other tutorial series related to extension, library and adaptive cards. So I have created a web part. Next, I want to give my web part a name, js-mermaid. Let's keep it simple. Then it tells me, Clavin, which particular template you want to use. Do you want to use the minimal? You want to use no framework? Or if you want to use React? Now we can use React, but this is a getting started tutorial series. So I'm going to go ahead and use no framework. I'm going to use pure vanilla JavaScript or TypeScript. 
what this does is that it starts building my project it created the structure for me look at this and it's doing an npm install perfect so fast forward the project has been created and this is what our project structure looks like now let's quickly go ahead and start our web server or a local web server and launch the workbench to do that I'm going to use the command gulp serve and hit enter this will open my workbench and I can see my web part in action okay I misspelled it it should be gulp serve not gulp server so this has opened my workbench but here my friends I'm getting an error an error tells me tenant name forward slash domain forward slash layout forward slash workbench so it cannot find the tenant name so to run a project there's another prerequisite that I missed the prerequisite you should have a SharePoint environment you should have a SharePoint online environment so what I'm going to do I'm going to go into the config I am going to click on config and I'm going to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the config I'm going to click on serve JSON and this is where I need to update my URL to point to my SharePoint instance I have updated it we look at the file structure in detail but for now you need to first know that you need to update serve.json now that I have updated my serve.json file inside the config folder this actually tries to launch my workbench uh, it's asking me to sign in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh my browser because it thinks that so gulp serve is not running I'll click on plus and here my friends I have the JS mermaid web part as of now it just looks like a vanilla SharePoint web part and that is what it is in the next tutorial we'll take it ahead we'll understand the file structure we'll write some code and we will also make sure that our mermaid diagram actually goes ahead and renders I hope this quick tutorial was informative Thank you for your time. Have a great day and bye-bye for now. See you in the next tutorial.